So welcome to the second of a series of videos in regards to the human ear and we're still covering the basic anatomy and again we're just uh, we're just doing that so we can further understand uh, what's going on as far as signal transduction. So we're going to talk about the organ of Cordy a little bit more in depth and we're going to see that there are different cells that are called the hair cells inner and outer hair cells. What's the difference between the two and how do the hair cells deliver the action potential? And in order to do that, I'm going to have to uh, look into the cochlea again because the organ of cordia is located in the cochlea. And what I'm going to do is if I have, if I have a, round, a round cochlea, I'm just going to open it up. I'm going to expand it. I'm going to open it up. And I already, me I already mentioned that there's some sort, of, some sort of membrane, some sort of membrane here, some sort of membrane here. And in order to really see the complexities of what's going on inside, I'm going to, to have to look inside in this direction. So if this is me, I'm looking in this direction. I'm looking in this direction. So if I open it up, what do I see here? Why do I see inside? Let's take a look. This is the inside, inside of the cochlea. Let me just draw out the boundaries. This you can, you can imagine this is the boundary of the cochlea that I'm, looking, that I'm looking through. And this membrane that I was talking about earlier, is this membrane, this right here. This is the tectorial membrane. This is the tectorial membrane. And what we really need to know about the tectorial membrane, we already mentioned that the cochlea has some sort of window here and some sort of window here. And this is the oval, oval window, and this is the circular window, circular window. And what we really need to know is that uh, the ossicles, namely the stapes, has a contact surface with the oval window. And these are the ossicles and they keep on going. And basically when, when the ossicles vibrate, the oval window goes, goes in and out. And that means that the membrane is also going to vibrate. The membrane is also going to vibrate. So whenever sound is coming through to the ossicles, this membrane also vibrates. Keeping that in mind, keeping that in mind, we can take a look and see that when this, this little uh, membrane vibrates, this little membrane vibrates, we can see that there are some sort of cells that come in contact with it, that come in contact with it. And these are the hair cells. Now these hair cells, and they're called hair cells because they have these, these funny looking hairs, these are actually stereocilia, stereo, stereocilia, stereocilium plural. And these, these hairs, you can say, are actually in contact here, they have a contact surface with the membrane, with the tectorial membrane. So when the membrane vibrates, when the membrane vibrates, you can imagine that there's going to be some associated motion with these hairs. Perfect. And, and we'll just stick into the very essentials. And there are three rows of, of inner hair cells and one row of outer hair cells. And the difference between the two is that the, in, the outer hair cell I say? No, the inner hair cell, sorry. The inner hair cell does not have a contact surface with the tectorial membrane. Because the tectorial membrane ends here, and these are the stereocilium, and there's no, real, there's no real contact surface between the two. Whereas with the outer hair cells, there are contact surfaces. And if you're wondering what I mean by three rows and one row, well, you can imagine that if, if I'm standing over here and I'm looking inside, I'm looking inside, if I see three rows, they're just going to just keep on going. There's hair, hair cells all across here. Hair cells, three rows of hair cells going in. And the inner hair cell maybe is, is this little guy, and there's going to be a row of these, of these inner hair cells. Very good. And how do, these, how do these work? Well, we already mentioned, and I'm just going to I just made a, a small, nice drawing here of the hair cells. In between different stereocilia, we have some sort of, of link, you can say, some sort of connection. And this little, this little wire here, I'm just going to call it a wire. This little wire here is connected on the other end to a potassium channel, to a potassium channel. And, uh, and I, I've, I've often seen that some, some drawings depict this channel on this side or the other end. Just don't worry about it. What you need to know is that these stereoteliums are close together and they are linked together in contact surface with potassium channels. And right away I can tell you that if this, if this, whole, if this whole hair cell, if this, is the, if this whole hair cell is in contact with some sort of membrane, 
some sort of membrane that vibrates, you can imagine that these guys would also somehow undergo a change. And it just so happens, it just so happens that I'm going to draw these guys, I'm going to just copy this. It just so happens that when these guys, when, when the tectorial membrane vibrates, these guys are just going to pull back. They're going to pull back and the, fur, the more it vibrates, the more they're going to pull back. And you can imagine when they're pulling back, these potassium channels will open up, will open up. Let me just, do, let me just go through here. Yeah, there we go. So when we have potassium channels open up, we're going to have a net flux of potassium. Potassium is going to move. And the interesting thing is, the interesting thing is with respect to hair cells is that we already learned there's more potassium inside of the cell and less potassium outside. But that's incorrect when we're talking about hair cells. Hair cells are different in the way that there's more potassium outside of the cell than inside. So that means potassium is going to flow inside. Potassium is going to flow inside. And if, if that doesn't make sense to you, look it up. Or you can trust me and take my word for it. The potassium is flowing into the hair cell. Potassium is flowing inside the hair cell. And the more deflection I'm going to have, the more these, the more vibration the tectorial membrane is going to have, the more vibration it's going to relay to these hair cells, the more they're going to bend, the more these bridges are going to open, and the more potassium is going to flow in. So you can see, or you can rather imagine, that the, uh, the stronger the vibration, the more influx of potassium I'm going to have. And basically, what's going to happen is potassium is going to, let me just switch colors here, potassium is just going to flow in via the stereocilium. It's going to flow in, and there's going to be some vesicles here containing excitatory neurotransmitters, and they're going to be dumped, and they're going to be uh, read in this nerve here. What you really need to know is that when, the, when uh, we have vibrations getting into our ear, ear by ear, the eardrum, the drum, eardrum vibrates, vibrates. The ossicles vibrate, ossicles vibrate, and then via the oval window, via the oval window, the cochlea gets the vibration, and then the organ of Corti, and then the tectorial, tectorial membrane, tectorial membrane vibrates. And to understand, the organ of Corti is really inside the cochlea. It's not a different thing. It's not one or the other. The organ of Corti is this, this organ here, this organ here. And it's just housed inside the cochlea. Very good. So once the tectorial membrane is vibrating, we're going to have opening, opening of potassium channels. And even though we learned that potassium is, a, is in a greater concentration inside the cell, it's not in this case. So we're going to have an influx, influx of potassium. Influx of potassium is really the action potential of the hair cells. So the more influx we're going to have, that means we had more deflection. That means we're going to have more of an action potential, or rather a more, a more intense action potential as far as the frequency of it. So this is basically the, uh, the idea behind the action potential of a hair cell. And again, all you really need to know is that hair cells have stereocilums on them. I wouldn't be surprised if it's not a necessity to know even the names. You can say that there are hairs in the hair cells. These hairs are connected to bridges of potassium channels between one another. And when, they, when the membrane moves, the tectorial membrane moves, these move and they open little, potass little potassium channels that cause the influx of potassium. Hopefully you found this helpful and we'll see you on the next video.